bendiga a uh, Hispanic speaking. Uh, todos los que quieran tomar fotos, por favor, si quieren pueden pasarse enfrente y tomar la foto a la familia, ¿ok? Conforme se van a ir bautizando, ¿ok? Los que hablan español, amén. los hermanos, amén. 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 It's, um, this, is a, this is a wonderful time of celebration, and I hope and pray today that, that you, every person that comes through this water, that you make a commitment to pray for them, that you encourage them, and you, and you be there for them because they are going to need it. Because when they come up out of this water, the devil is waiting for them. The enemy is waiting to attack. Uh, so we encourage you today to pray for them as they make this profession of faith to all of you. And uh, we are excited today for these yes. people. Amen. Amen. Lori Whitney. Uh, do, do Marisol first. The Spanish people first. Francisco Toledo. el bautismo en agua, pero el Espíritu Santo dará el bautismo en el Espíritu Santo. Así que en el nombre del de Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo, el pastor Marcos te bautiza. Amén. Cierra, cierra, ponte, 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 respira profundo, arrodíllate, arrodíllate. Y te vamos a poner para hacer atrás, ¿ok? Una, dos, tres. Transformar. 
ya lo pasado quedó atrás y ahora tienes que enfrentar a lo que viene. El enemigo no se va a quedar con las manos cruzadas, sino al contrario, va a querer hacerte la vida imposible. Pero tómate de la, de la mano de Cristo y sigue adelante. Yo, yo como ministro, como pastor, te bautizo en nombre del Padre y del Espíritu Santo. Dobla, dobla tus rodillas, pon tu mano en la, en la nariz. Respira. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Concepción Luna Concepción Luna
Lázaro izquierdo. Sister Lori comes today and on professing her faith in the Lord Jesus. And uh, we had a service here and, and she raised her hand and said that she needed salvation. And uh, we are excited today and we celebrate with her. And, and Brian back there, y'all just had to forgive him. He, he'd like to cut a laugh here. Man. <laughs> but uh, we, are, we are very excited and we celebrate with her today and you pray for her because each and every one of these people have their own struggles. Every, there's things that they're going through in their lives every day. Uh, and they need your prayer. So you, you pray for her this morning. Yes. Sister Lori, I want to profess with your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In obedience to thy command, O God, I baptize thee this day, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Joseph Medlin. This is my brother Joseph, my new brother in Christ. Amen. Many of you may or may not remember, but there was a service here on a Sunday night. Five minutes before time to start, and God changed my message right there. Yep. God changed my message for this young man. Amen. You pray for him, 
He's, he's got struggles of his own, and you pray for him each and every day Thanks. that God will continue to strengthen him and mold him into the man that God wants him to be. Amen. Joseph, on the statement of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in obedience to thy command, O God, I baptize this now, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Sister Christy comes this morning on a profession of her faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, last, last Sunday morning, we had a powerful service here and eight people made decisions for Christ. Amen. And she was one of the eight. Yes. And uh, we, we thank God for this. And you, you pray for her each day. Uh, and she has things in her life. And you just pray that God will strengthen her, encourage her, and help her to be the wife, the mother, everything she needs to be for the Lord yes. today. Amen. Christy, on a statement of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in obedience to thy command, O God, I baptize thee this now, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. He has a long road as long as everyone else. Pray that God will mold him into the man that God would have him to be and to be the husband and father that he needs to be in his home. Billy, on a profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in obedience to thy command, I baptize thee this now, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. coming for quite some time now and me and Chris had a discussion a few weeks prior to this that he he was praying that God would save his family all of his family we had a service and she came down and accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior so you pray for her today because she really has a long road ahead she has to face all these things in school all the peer pressure all the temptations so you pray for Morgan today that God would strengthen her and be with her and help her every step of the way. Amen. And you pray for her family yes. today. Working on a profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In obedience to thy command, O God, I baptize thee this now, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Dakota Sagi. This morning is another special time for us. Dakota comes today to profess to you that he believes in Jesus and he accepted Jesus in his heart as his Lord and Savior. Sometimes people may say, well, I, I just wonder about that. I know we had a chance to sit down and talk with him. He knows what he's doing today and he believes in Jesus and he loves Jesus with all of his heart. And he wants to confess that to you today. So you pray for him this morning. Dakota, on a profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in obedience to thy command, O God, I baptize thee this now, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amanda Sagi. <laughs> Sister Amanda comes this morning in a very special time for this family. Her son was just baptized. That Sunday morning, that last Sunday morning when we had eight decisions for Christ, little did we know God was still working after we left here. The Holy Spirit of God was still moving. And we got back here early Sunday afternoon and she said, uh, I want you to talk to Dakota for a minute. And as we were talking with Dakota, she said, there was one more. And she said, it was me. <laughs> Glory to God. God's still in the saving business. If you don't believe in God today, something is wrong. God is real. God is alive and well. And we rejoice today. So you, you pray for her today. Command on a profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In obedience to thy command, O God, I baptize thee this now, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. souls that the devil can't have no more. We rejoice with them today and I am so blessed today. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to share in baptism with my brother in Christ, Amen. Pastor Marco. Yes. This morning, we both had seven. We had 14. He come to me this morning he said, Pastor, got one more. <laughs> Fifteen souls today. We love you and you pray for the church. You pray for these folks. Yes. And pray for us that we would always walk in God's will. Amen. And do what God would have us do. Yes. We love you this morning. Amen. I can't describe the feeling that I feel right now. It says, people, people in this world will, will look at you and think you're crazy. Man, that, that guy's got something wrong with him. Nah, ain't nothing wrong with me. It's called Jesus. It's called the shed blood power of Jesus Christ. Uh, that changed these 15 souls today. And uh, I, I'm just so, so excited today. And uh, I want to share some scripture with you. Um, I'm going to share the scripture in English, and then Pastor Marco is going to come and, and share in Spanish. That way everyone can hear the word today. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Romans chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 14. Today, we're talking about walking in newness of life. Once this change happens in your life, 
There has got to be a difference. There has got to be a change. You must walk in newness of life. God did not save you just to go back out there and to live like you've always lived. Go back and do what you used to do. You have got to change. Uh, and He tells us here in the Scripture today in Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. If you found your place, let's stand and honor the Word of God this morning. Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For we have, if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over Him. For in that He died, He died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Amen. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. You ought to be giving God some glory this morning. Let's, uh, let's pray this morning. Dear God, I come to you right now, God, in the precious, humble name of Jesus. God, I just pray this morning, God, that you would speak to these people today. God, speak to these hearts. God, if there's one person in this building today who's lost and dying, and they're going to go to hell and spend eternity in hell, God, I pray that something that is said today, something that is heard, God would speak to their spirit today. And God, you said there is no other way a man can be saved unless he comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And God, we beg and plead from the throne of glory today, God, that your spirit would fall this morning. And God, if there's that one, God, you would tug on their heartstrings today and let them know, God, that you want them to spend eternity with you in heaven. Lord, we love you. We thank you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You can be seated. So, so we, we, we see in this scripture, just to, we just wanted to read this to you to give you a reminder. Those of you that were baptized this morning, the devil is coming for you. The devil hates what you did today. And he does not want you to exceed in the Lord. So we see here that your sins this morning were buried. You buried those sins this morning and you were resurrected in the newness of life of Jesus. This does not give us a ticket. You know, everybody thinks that, well, I'll come to church and I'll get saved and everything will be good and I'm good to go. And I can go out and live like hell, do what I want to do, and it's all going to be good. That is not the case. Grace is not a ticket for you to go out there and live like you want to live, do what you want to do, and expect to come in God's house and say, oh, how I love Jesus. He ain't hearing it, honey. He don't want to hear it. He wants you to be obedient to Him. The dead must die. You must die to yourself. Self must die. And we hear it in the Word. He said right there, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into His death. And He said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? When Jesus saves you and God resurrects you from that sin, you don't go back to it no more. That's right. You know, people in this world today, they have a problem. They get saved, they think everything's good, and they think they can go right back out there and hang out with their old buddies, hang out with their old friends. Oh, I'm good. I'm saved now. Oh, the devil is waiting for you. You better change your playground. You better change who you're hanging out with. There's got to be a newness of life. Walk in the newness of life. So today, 
We pray for these. Because they are now under the enemy's radar more than they were before. Because as long as you're living for the enemy, he's rocking you in the cradle. He's got you right where he wants you. Everything's good. Life is good. No worries. The moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, <laughs> target's on your back. So this morning, we just want to share with you, there is hope. There is this one called Jesus that we baptize today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There is one who loves you right where you are. He loves you right where you've been. It does not matter where you've been. It does not matter what your past is. God loves you today. And He died on the cross for you this morning. Jesus loves you. You say, well, how can Jesus love me? I've been shooting up drugs. I've been an alcoholic. I've done all these things. God loved you when you were doing that. God saw you where you were. And God came down from the portals of glory and walked this earth. And it said in the Word of God that He was beat unrecognizable as a man. He did that for you and for me. So this morning, if you're in this building, I hope and pray that today you know without a doubt your election is made sure that if you take your last breath today, if God calls you home today, you don't know what could happen. You could have a brain aneurysm. You could be in a car accident. Anything can happen. And in that moment, boom, you're standing before God. Will you be ready for that day? Brother Marco, you come and share this morning. It's going to be a little bit different now. I'm going to be preaching in English and Spanish at the same time. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Pastor told me he was not going to preach, and he did. <laughs> I'm like, okay, just carry on. <laughs> like, like Jose. Yeah. Uh, he already read about the, uh, the description that I was going to read, too. And I was going to read it in Spanish, okay? Uh, ¿Qué pues diremos? Persevere, ¿Perseveraremos en el pecado para que la gracia abunde? En ninguna manera, porque los que hemos muerto al pecado, ¿cómo viviremos aún en él? ¿O no sabéis que todos los que hemos sido bautizados en Cristo Jesús, hemos sido bautizados en su muerte? Porque somos sepultados juntamente con Él para muerte por el bautismo. Eso es lo que significa el bautismo. Morir al viejo hombre y, resu y, y resucitar en una nueva persona, en una nueva criatura. No criatura, sino en un hijo de Dios, una hija de Dios. Amén. Entonces dice, a fin de que como Cristo resucitó de los muertos, de la gloria del Padre, así también nosotros andemos en vida nueva. Amén. En vida nueva. There's some Americans that understand that. Vida nueva. New life. Amén. A new life. Vida nueva. Caminando en vida nueva. Amén. Porque si fuimos plantados juntamente con Él, en la semejanza de su muerte, así también lo seremos en la de su resurrección. Sabiendo esto, que nuestro viejo hombre fue crucificado juntamente con él lo que acabamos de ser cuando nos sumergimos en las aguas fuimos sepultados juntamente con Cristo amén eh, nuestro viejo hombre fue, fue crucificado juntamente con él para que el cuerpo del pecado sea destruido a fin de que no sirvamos más al pecado Así que si queremos servir al pecado, recordemos el momento que estábamos sumergiéndonos en las aguas. A lo que no le agrada a Dios, para, en caso de que quieras o queramos pecar, traigamos a memoria el momento en que nos sumergimos a las aguas. Que eso representa morir al viejo hombre, morir a lo que te gusta, morir a lo que quieres, morir a lo que te agrada y resucitar a lo que le agrada a Dios. Amén. Ahora dice, porque el que ha muerto ha sido justificado del pecado. Fuimos justificados 
No había manera de cómo nosotros ser justificados anteriormente, pero a través del bautismo y por medio de Jesucristo podemos ser justificados de nuestros pecados. Antes no se perdonaba nuestros pecados de la manera que hoy se perdona. Amén. Amén. No podemos jugar, no podemos decir hoy sí, mañana no, pero después sí. Tenemos que tomar una sola mentalidad, poner una idea en nuestra cabeza, decir yo ya no vivo, es Cristo que vive en mí. Como Pablo lo dijo, ya no vivo yo, más Cristo vive en mí. Así, así morimos con Cristo, creemos que también vivimos con Él, sabiendo que Cristo, habiendo resucitado de los muertos, ya no, ya no muere. La muerte no se enseñará más de Él, porque en cuanto murió, el pecado murió una vez por todas, mas en cuanto vive, para Dios vive. Así también vosotros, consideraos, consideraos muertos al pecado, pero vivos para Dios en Cristo Jesús Señor nuestro. No reine pues el pecado en vuestro cuerpo mortal, de modo que lo obedezcáis en sus concupiscencias. No podemos dejar que el, 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 el pecado reine en nosotros, sino que es todo lo contrario, no darle cabida al enemigo para que el pecado no entre en nosotros. Por ejemplo, hay diferentes tipos de pecados, pero el pecado es solamente uno. En inglés, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. There's a lot of types of uh, sins, but sin is only one. You can be drinking, you can be smoking, you can be doing drugs, you can be doing all kinds of stuff, but sin is sin. No matter if you do adultery, no matter if you do this, that, let me tell you something. Now this day, pastor only focus on uh, punish adultery, punish, uh, 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 how can you say that, alcoholic, punish, uh, I don't know how you say that in English, but it's a okay. <laughs> we, we, we pastor, pastor, we punish. I don't know how you say that. Punish. Yeah. But let me tell you this. Now this day, we do not punish pride. Go ahead, brother. We can punish adultery. We punish. Uh, we can punish uh, alcoholic. Tobacco, everything that, that, that was in the eye. But let me tell you something. Now these days, pastor will not punish pride. Yeah, yeah, right. Amen. If I, if we, I'm sorry, pastor, but we are pastors. <laughs> if I have a member that I told you, you know what? I want you to sweep, uh, the, 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 sweep the, the, the bathroom. Sweep, you know, vacuum the carpet. I want you to sweep the toilet. You might want to say, well, hold on. I'm a... Uh, I'm a high quality here. <laughs> I can't do it. You see, we don't punish pride. And let me tell you this. It's something that I teach my the, the Hispanic church. That's the main. That's the main sin that can take you straight to hell. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. For you to understand that it will take you all the way to hell. Do you know what? The devil that was in heaven, pride took him right. out of heaven. Right. Pride took him out of heaven. Right. Pride. You know why? You know why pride is always a, a pride will, will make you take a position that is not yours. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the devil tried to do. Yeah. He tried to take a position which he is. That's right. Uh, he, he tried to take God's place come on that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. and some of the members are like oh you know I can do better than the pastor I can preach better than the pastor you know what the day we say yes to the Lord to become a pastor we yeah. will fight him yeah. now fight him to not do it yeah. why because pride pride it won't let us make a make a choice to decide that we serve God, we serve God or not. Yeah. Pride will make you, I'm sorry, but this is a, 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 a word that, I, that I'm, I don't use it in English, but I use it in Spanish. <laughs> a miserable person. Yeah. That's right. You're never gonna get happy for what you got. You always want somebody else's position. You always want to, you know why God didn't kill David? Because his, his, his mercy 
But if it were for God, he will kill David. Why? Because he took a position that it wasn't his when he took that woman. He took a position that a husband, that a lover, that a, I mean, a boyfriend, he, David already had his, I don't know how many women he had. He thought one in the list that won't be enough, I mean, it will be bad. But let me tell you, God already have a list for you. Don't add another one in the list. Don't add another position on the God list because he already got your list. And my list too, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pastor. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to apologize. You know, I preach hard to my people. Why? Why? Because if we don't do that, we will be in front of God. That's right. And He will tell us what He didn't preach, what I told you to you to preach. That's right. Now, what I was telling the, the, the church, David, he took a position that wasn't his. He killed this man. God didn't punish him because he took that woman. God punished him because he took a position that wasn't his. Right. How many of us take a position that is not us? Mm. It's not belong to us. It's a pastor, it's pastor's here. I'm sorry, let me tell you this. He's the pastor, not you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If you're the one who played the keyboard, I'm sorry, but that's you, not him, or not her. God has you position. You know what? You know how long it be. You know how long I've been in the in the, in, the, in the back of the line waiting for God to call me. Yeah. I've been 22 years. Wow. Come on. And God called me two years ago. Amen. Amen. Don't take a position that not belong to you. Iglesia, no tome la posición, ninguna posición que Dios te ha que, que Dios no te ha dado. Siempre mantén tu posición quien tú eres. Always keep yourself your own position. Always keep yourself who you are, who you are in Christ. No matter who come, no matter who do. The longest God calling you, you stay, stay focused on what God wants you to do. Amen. I like Baptist people. You know why? Because I always have to remind them. Remember that step. Remember that position that you already took. Remember that, 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 that situation that already God put you in. When Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit, I love it because when the Holy Spirit, when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came and took him. Yeah. I love it because Jesus, not me, the Holy Spirit is not going to leave you alone. He always going to take your hand and take you. Oh man, he's going to take you for a hard time. But let me tell you this, when he take you for the hard time, you know what? He wants you to trust Him. Yes. That's right. Yes. He wants you to put all your trust, all your heart, all your feelings, everything you got on you, put it on Him. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Is that what Jesus said? Is that what Jesus did? Yeah. That's right. Take all your cares. The Holy Spirit took Him. I bet Jesus didn't want to go. I bet you. I bet Jesus said the same thing in the, uh, I mean, when, before He was taken to the cross. You know, hold on, hold on, Holy Spirit. Let me, let me, let me go on vacation first to get, to get strength. Let me go on vacation. Be, no, I, I wanna go on vacation before I, I, I wanna, I wanna go to the desert. It is hard to go to the desert, Amen. but everybody will go through it. Amen. And the only way you can make out of that is through holding you, on the Holy Spirit's hand. Amen. Amen. How many of you? Beholding God, beholding the Holy Spirit's hand. Amen. The only way you can sin is when you let the hand. That's right. That's right. Go. That's right. Enoch was walking. That's what the Bible says. Enoch. Yeah. Is that how you say it in English? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch. It doesn't say a whole lot of story. The Bible says that Enoch was walk with God and God took him. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, let me tell you this. When you're walking with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, oh, you hold his hand or her hand, you will not let go. The same way Enoch. Yes. Enoch was walking every day, yeah. every minute, every hour, every second of his life. When he walked with God, God took him. Let me tell you something. You, we walk with God, we walk with the Holy Spirit. It will be a day when we get old, and you know what? He will take us. Amen. He will take us. Yes. 
So the pride will take you all the way to hell. Yeah. But the humbleness mm. will take you straight to heaven. Hey. That's the message today. That's the message today. Este es el mensaje de hoy. Caminamos en humildad, Dios nos lleva con él al cielo. Pero si caminamos oh, con, con, con ese eh, egoísmo, con ese orgullo, Vamos a ir directito al infierno. Qué mensaje tan tremendo Dios me ha dado en esta iglesia. Anda, no sé, dar el Pero what a message God gave me in this. This is, all, this is all about. Pride will take you straight down to heaven. Humbleness will take you straight to heaven. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. We've heard enough gospel preached right here yep. to save this entire world. But the number one key, pride. Pride cometh before the fall. Yep. <laughs> so this morning, as they come to close us out in a song, I want you to examine where you are today. You know, this is something that a lot of people struggle with, men, women, men in particular. I can say it because I'm a man and I know. We get prideful. I'll fix it. I can do this. I got this. I don't need nobody's help. No, I'm not doing that. I'm too prideful for that. So this morning, I don't want you thinking about nobody else. If, if, he, if, if this morning in your mind, it's already crossed your mind, well, so-and-so, yeah, they better get on down there. They got a problem. You got a problem. And you better beat them down here. Why? Because... There are so many things in this world that want to stop you. The devil wants to stop you today. He wants to stop this. He wants to stop it. But I'm glad to know today that Jesus has authority over the devil. The devil has no authority through a child of God. He has no authority. We allow him. Just like he said, the moment that you stop and you let go of the hand of the Holy Spirit of God, you be prepared because the enemy is waiting for you and he will take that hand right up. So this morning, where will you spend your eternity? These 15 people that came through this pool today, they know where they're going. They've made their election sure. They know that they know that they know that if God calls them home today, they'll be in heaven with Him. Can you say the same? You say, oh, I've been going to church all my life. I'm good. I know people that have been going to church all their life. I've seen senior citizens step out of the aisle and accept God for the first time. Amen. Why? Because they laid that pride down and came to an old-fashioned altar. You're never too young, you're never too old to receive the gift of Jesus Christ. It's free and don't cost you nothing. He already paid the price on Calvary's hill. That's right. So this morning, as they come to close us out in this last song, the question for you today is, where are you going to open your eyes when you take your last breath? Where will you be?